Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, song says, is there not a cause? And certainly we know that there is definitely a cause and uh, we're thankful to be a part of the kingdom of God and uh, working towards and for that cause. We are coming to you live from uh, Norfolk, Ohio. Um, we want to... Uh, Welcome everyone this afternoon. We're uh, kind of on a different schedule uh, today because um, uh, in our local congregation we have uh, a revival going on. Uh, Brother McCraney is here and he's been doing a wonderful job of bringing forth uh, the messages that God has laid upon his heart to bring us. Uh, and they have certainly been a blessing to us and we have certainly had a good time in the Lord. So if you're in the Newark area and you're looking for uh, looking for truth, uh, looking for a service to get into, um, the church is located, uh, Church of God at God's Acres uh, is located at 675 North Cedar Street, Newark, Ohio. Um, and like I said, we've definitely been having a good time in the Lord um, as Brother McCraney uh, visits and uh, delivers a word unto us. Um, First of all, we want to um, just give a couple acknowledgments and um, and uh, give a couple updates. Uh, first, we want to um, acknowledge our pastor, Brother Bro Roger Decker. Uh, he's the pastor of our local congregation here in Newark, Ohio, a church of God at God's Acres. Uh, certainly, he's been a, a blessing and an encouragement to us. Uh, and again, he's the one that God has laid the charge of uh, feeding our soul. And uh, certainly we he strives and endeavors to do that and does a good job of uh, caring for the flock there at God's Acres. Um, we also want to uh, acknowledge our brother uh, Ricky Morris. He's the pastor of the Church of God in Chesapeake, Virginia. Um, and also... Uh, he runs up on this rock ministry, um, and he uh, also has a stream. He streamed earlier today uh, at seven o'clock, and he preached on um, what is Babylon, and it was a wonderful lesson. Um, 
that's my brother. We uh, certainly do love and appreciate him. So we ask that you all just remember him and, and that ministry in, in your prayers and that you would support that that ministry broadcast and that ministry and that work in Chesapeake, Virginia. Um, we're still working on uh, uh, some video upgrades, um, trying to get settings, you know, just right. Uh, we pray that it's a little better for you. It's been a little below my standard. Um, so we've been working uh, to try to get those things uh, ironed out a little bit. Um, the sound is good. We're real, we're, you know, we're pretty happy with the sound. Um, but we just, we'll just, we'll probably always continue to strive to make, uh, you know, to make it look better, make it sound better, mm -hmm. just make it a better experience for, for uh, those of you that are are faithful to watch. Um, the next thing on the list is uh, again like and share. Um, we just ask and uh, pray that you would uh, just uh, like and share the uh, the broadcast. Uh, like and share the Church of God at God's Acres. We, there's a web page there. Um, <clears throat> um, Church of God at uh, Chesapeake. Virginia, uh, and again, upon this rock ministry um, broadcast and uh, uh, line upon line ministry broadcast is the uh, the Facebook page and the uh, <coughs> the uh, Facebook page and the um, I also got a YouTube page going for the broadcast so. Um, we just ask and pray that you would uh, like and share those pages. Uh, you know, it doesn't take very long for someone to, uh, one person to like and share it, and they share it to all their friends list. And uh, the Word of God can just be uh, spread abroad in a great way through uh, through this avenue of, of sharing. So uh, please uh, support these efforts that, uh, these men of God are endeavoring to work with the Lord on and, and spread the gospel to one. So we want to uh, play a song for you now. And uh, we just uh, pray that it would be a blessing to you. And, uh, if you have any prayer requests, you can put those in the chat uh, the chat box. Um, and uh, we'll try to uh, we'll uh, try to look at those and, and remember your prayer requests. But... Uh, Put those in, and uh, we'll play a song for you now.
So um, <clears throat> I'm having a little bit of trouble here with um, the video. So we want to go to prayer before we uh, start the the lesson, and um, Looks like there's two videos, so. But we want to, um, I'm having trouble seeing your comments right now, so. <clears throat> we want to remember our pastor, Brother Decker. Um, he continues to have trouble in his back. We want to hold on to prayer for him. Um, Brother Brewer, um, he is battling uh, leukemia in his blood. And, uh, <clears throat> I just told my mother that he really likes Thai food, so um, I asked my mother to uh, come down maybe uh, sometime and see if she can cook him some Thai food, so we're going to try to do that for Brother Brewer, so just remember him uh, in prayer and his condition. Brother Ur Earl Borders, we want to continue to remember him. He just had a uh, foot surgery, um, so we just, we're asking the Lord to help him along and uh, help him to recover and um, so we just ask and pray that you would also remember our son uh, Eric we're going to be traveling out there uh, to Washington he's stationed in Washington State right now uh, he's in the uh, 75th Ranger Regiment and he's going to be uh, moving back home to be closer to the church and closer to family um, newborn baby in Christ he's doing really well um, and we're we're happy that the Lord has spoke to his heart saved his soul and uh, the great work that he's doing in his life and uh, so we just ask and pray that you would remember him we also ask that you would uh, remember brother uh, brother Morris um, man my brother has a lot of irons in the fire sometimes I wonder you know how he's able to to do all that he's doing he's just very busy in the kingdom uh, very busy uh, working in the kingdom and uh, we just ask and pray that uh, the Lord would remember him and his wife as they endeavor to work in the kingdom of God and with the Lord in Chesapeake Virginia so let us look to the Lord uh, in a word of prayer and remember these requests Father in heaven, we humble ourselves before thee today, giving thee thanks and praise for thy goodness unto us, for all your many blessings, Lord. We uh, certainly do thank thee that we can 
present ourselves at the foot of thy throne, dear Lord, and that we have a high priest standing in our holies of holies to uh, take the incense of our prayers and offer them up to the Father as an acceptable sacrifice, and that it's a sweet-smelling savor unto the, unto the Father, dear Lord. We thank thee and praise thee for all that you've done for us, dear Father, and all that you're doing for us. We ask and pray that you would remember our pastor in his physical condition, Lord, and not only his physical condition, but you would remember him and his uh, fiance, dear Lord, that you would just bless him and uh, help him and encourage him uh, to uh, execute the calling that in which thou has uh, called him, dear Lord, and that you would just help him to pastor the congregation in a manner that would be pleasing unto thee. And we ask, Lord, that you would also remember Brother Brewer, dear Father. Certainly thou knowest the condition that's upon his body, dear Lord, and how we're looking to thee to help him, dear Lord, in his physical ailment, dear Father, and uh, just giving that divine healing that he stands in, in need of and that he's looking to thee for. And we also ask and pray that you would remember Brother Borders, dear Lord, that you would help him in his recovery, dear Father. And we ask and pray that you would just uh, bless him and anoint him, dear Lord, to feed the uh, Church of God there in uh, Summersville, West Virginia, dear Lord, that uh, he might do it in a manner that's pleasing unto thee as well. We ask and pray, Lord, that you would remember our son today, dear Father, that you would bless and encourage him uh, in the things of thee, that you would anoint his ears, dear Lord, and give him that portion which is uh, needed for him, dear Father, we pray. And and we uh, don't want to forget our brother Morris, dear Father, that you would just help him, Lord. And certainly you see the many things there that are going on in the congregation there and with the broadcast there and the daycare, dear Lord, and just the many things that... Uh, him and Sister Sister Morris are uh, are active in, dear Father. We just ask and pray that you would strengthen their hands, dear Father, and give them that strength that they stand in need of to do what thou hast called them to do. We ask, Lord, that you would just remember the broadcast today. Certainly thou knowest we can't do anything without thee, dear Lord, and we won't, won't, don't want to speak one word that's outside of thy will and outside of thy word dear father we just ask and pray that you would anoint us from on high dear lord that you would touch our lips that you would uh, bless us lord that we might be able to deliver those things and which would be pleasing unto thee and we ask and pray that you would uh, anoint the ears of the hearers dear lord that they may hear what the spirit saith dear father we pray and we'll be sure to thank thee and praise thee for all that's accomplished and we ask it in the name of jesus amen Amen. So today we're talking about, um, this is the time of the kingdom part two, a secret revealed. And uh, this, as I studied this week, um, the message kind of took a turn that I really didn't uh, expect it to take. But I guess that's one of the ways that we know that we're in the will of God. You know, we can have. Uh, an idea of how we think uh, a message uh, would or should go and uh, we we get before the Lord and he says now nah, this is what this is what I want you to this is what I want you to speak this is what I want you to say and these are the scriptures that I want you to bring um, so it's the time of the king the time of the kingdom part two um, Last week, we looked at the time of the kingdom from uh, a scriptural um, perspective, per se. Uh, we looked at, at some of the language, uh, some of the English language uh, that describes the kingdom uh, and when it is. Um, and this week, we're, this week is kind of like an introduction to uh, Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Uh, of the latter days and let me pull that up in the overlay here <clears throat> so this is kind of like an introduction to Nebuchadnezzar's dream and basically Nebuchadnezzar he was a king uh, of Babylon at this particular time and uh, he has a dream and he has a dream of this image and um, basically this image is um, a revelation of kingdoms to come. Four of the kingdoms are literal kingdoms, but the last kingdom is the kingdom of heaven, and it, it's a spiritual kingdom. And um, 
today's lesson is more or less a um, it's more or less a uh, an introduction to that um, we're gonna be looking at a lot of scriptures because there's a lot of things that I feel like God has laid upon our heart to to bring to you so we just ask that you pray for us as we get into the lesson and um, you know if, I, I remember I remember um, and I've told a lot of people this I, I remember I remember um, I had a CD of of Brother Borders and he was preaching on the four apocalyptic courses and um, I had the he was preaching the CD at the particular CD that I had it was on the second horse or the red horse and I popped that into my CD player and uh, my Windows media player just anything that I put in there it downloaded it into the uh, to the Windows media library and um, you know I had only put in church music so the only thing that was in the library was church music but I put the CD in there and it downloaded that CD and that message into the library and um, every time that that message would come on I would listen to it and um, this went on for oh probably over a year I listened to that message over and over and over and over again and um, every time that it would come on I would get a little bit something more out of it because there was so much truth there was so much scriptures that was that was that was used um, God continued to to speak to me through uh, through the message so I say all that to say you know you may na you may not get everything that I'm that I say today I know my mom had called me she said you know I, I, I can't follow everything you're saying and you know I told her I said you know that's not the way a message works you know you you only get what um, what God wants you to have at that particular time and um, you know if you you know if you have an opportunity to go back and listen to some of these messages um, I had brother Wilson's message on the 70 weeks I listened to it and I, I think I listened to it three times in a row and just picking up different things out of it so uh, if you if you have a chance or if you feel like you're not getting the full uh, the full story we have the opportunity to replay the message and listen to listen to it again um, we encourage you to do that because you know when I listen to the brethren um, I listen to the messages quite a few times and I'm trying to get every little bit uh, out of it that I can so don't be discouraged if you don't you're not understanding everything you know the Bible was uh, written and um, we read from it and read from it and read from it and read from it and it's it's a living it's a living book we can read the same scripture over and over again for years and years and years and then one day God just reveals something new to us or not something new but something that we had never seen before because he didn't he wasn't ready to open it to us so uh, just keep striving and, and keep uh, seeking the Lord in that way and and uh, continue in his word and in his doctrine and he'll continue to reveal itself so let's get to the first slide here we're reading out of Daniel Daniel 2 um, Sorry, we're having a little bit of... There we go. All right, we're reading out of a second chapter of Daniel, and this is verses 1 through 3, and it says, In the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep break from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians, the, and the astrologers, and the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans, for to show the king his dream, so they came and stood before the king and the king said unto them I have dreamed a dream and my spirit was troubled to know the dream so King Nebuchadnezzar calls for the magicians astrologers sorcerers and Chaldeans Chaldeans to show show him his dream and they asked the king to tell him the dream so that they can interpret the dream for him but the king demands that they not only interpret the dream, but they also tell him what the dream was. And they 
you know, they they seem to think that this is a really hard thing. And we'll I think we'll get into those scriptures here in a second. Uh, but Nebuchadnezzar promises death to the Chaldeans if the dream and the interpretation could not be revealed. But gifts, rewards, and great honor if the secret is revealed. Um, so let's go on to the next slide here. So this is Daniel 2.10 through 14. And it says, The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, Lord, nor ruler, that asks such a thing at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. And it is a rare thing that the king requireth and there is none other that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. For this cause the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. And they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. Now, Daniel and, and his brethren were part of these, uh, considered part of these wise men of Babylon. So they, they were included with the, uh, the ones to be slain. So here's Daniel 2, 16 through 18. And we're, we're kind of leaving some scriptures out to make the reading a little more uh, bearable and not so long. But <clears throat> there's a lot of things that we have to include here. So this is Daniel 2, 16 through 18. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time, that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house, made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire the mercies of God, of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Amen. It's always good to desire mercies of God, mercies of the God of heaven concerning secrets. This, this desire is the difference between a man living both literally and spiritually and perishing with the wise men of Babylon. And we can see this desire of separation, uh, separational fate um, in Daniel 1, where Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, not with wine. And not with the wine that he drank. And uh, I have written down Psalms 91. Let's turn there for a second. Let's see what Psalms 91 says. I didn't put that in there. So listen to the first, to the first uh, scripture here. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His trust shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Amen. And that's what, that's what Daniel is doing here you know the king has made a decree that he wants to know not only the interpretation of this dream but he wants to know what the dream was and and the astrologers and astrologers and the magicians of babylon at that time had told the king this is impossible what you're asking for is is impossible but we know that with god all things are possible especially when when it's concerning secrets that he can reveal. So that's what 
That's what Daniel's doing. He wants God to be his rock and his fortress. And, and, and Daniel was a man that dwelt in the secret place of the Most High. So then we're going to move on to Daniel 2.19 through 23. It says, Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of the Lord forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes, changeth the times and the seasons he removeth kings and setteth up kings and giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge unto them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee. O thou God of my fathers who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me what we sh desired of thee for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Amen. The wisdom, the might, the knowledge, the understanding and the deep thing, secret things revealed can be seen in verse 21. What's it say? And he changes the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. Amen. This secret had to do with a change of times and seasons. And things concerning the removal of kings and the setting up of kings. That's what this secret was revealing. That's what this dream was revealing. This was done in terms of Nebuchadnezzar by means of a dream. In verse 19, it says that in terms of... Uh, but in, in verse 19, it says that um, the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. Amen. So <clears throat> I want to, um, before we go on, I just want to give a little testimony here. Um, you know, a lot of people think that dreams and visions are just something to be shrugged off and never to be looked at but we're going to prove to you by the word of God that's not the case in every case certainly there are times where people dream dreams and have visions uh, mainly dream dreams they don't mean nothing but brethren when you start to see things in that dream and you're, you're living a holy life and the spirit of God dwells within you. You start to see things in that dream that lines up with the word of God. You might want to try. You might want to take notice. You might want to even write them down. You might want to even start looking in the word of God and, and seeing maybe maybe the spirit of God is trying to tell you something. Now, I know there's a lot of people that's going to say, oh, we don't we got the word now. God don't have to speak to people that way. We're going to get to that. We're going to deal with it naysayers amen but we're talking about things that line up with the word things that this, the word witnesses to we're not talking about just some dream that somebody has that doesn't make any sense we're talking about things that line up with the word of God and people can say all they want to say but I'm gonna, we're going to give you the scriptures here in a second So the testimony I have is I had this dream and I was driving down the road and I came to this gate and this gate was locked. It had a chain on it. 
and it had a lock on it. Well, at the, I didn't think I had a key, but I did. I do have a key. Um, but I didn't think I had a key at the time, so I got out and um, I got out of my vehicle and I locked the doors. And they, they were manual locks at the time. And I got out of the vehicle and I noticed that there was a small fence a few feet away from me. And just beyond that fence, there lied two lions. In that same 90, in that same 91st Psalm, in verse 13, what's it say? Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample underfoot. There was two lions. A lion and a young lion. The young lion was looking off into the distance. He didn't, he, I don't even, it was like he didn't even know I was there. But the, the lion had his eyes set right on me. And, I, you know, the thought that came to my mind was, well, it's good that neither one of the boys is with me. And as soon as I thought that, here come Iran bouncing around the, the front of the truck. So I said, Iran, come here. So I picked him up with my right hand. I looked down, and in the left hand, there was a little a little black book. Now, we can go to the scriptures, and we know what the little black book is. Amen? And we're going to get to what the gate is. Well, we're not gonna get into what the gate is, but we're gonna get to, we're gonna we're gonna see that there is a gate. And brother, I think brother brother Morris preached about this gate uh, the other day when he was teaching about the sheep, the shepherd, and the sheepfold. Amen. So <clears throat> when this old lion saw that I had this little black book in his hand, in my hand. It was like he couldn't even look upon me. He just turned his head away. He didn't have nothing for me. Amen. So we go through the scriptures and we start looking for these symbols. Trying to trying to see if God is trying to tell us something. And we find many, many symbols. Lions in the book in the Bible, a lot of times lions represent men. Or characteristics of men. Amen. You can see uh, that lions represent men. And like I said, we're not going to get into the to the gate, but the chain on the gate, the key to the gate. Amen. You know, the angel, what was it? The angel in the 20th chapter of Revelation, he said he's seen a strong angel come down out of heaven with a great chain and a key. Amen. These are, these are biblical symbols that we're dreaming about. Amen. We're going to tell you a secret today. So let's go on a little bit. We're going to look at another scripture. In another prophecy concerning another instance where God is going to change, like in verse 21, where it says right here in verse 21, right there where I'm highlighting my, where, where I got my cursor at, changes the times and seasons and remove kings and set kings up. We're going to give you another example and, and I want you to listen to some of the things that we've already talked about and see if you can hear some of the things that we've already talked about in this scripture. So let us go on a little bit. We're going to go over to the Isaiah 45. This is Isaiah 45, 1 through 3. Thus saith the Lord of Cyrus, he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built. And to, thy, to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him. I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leave gates. And the gates shall not be shut. Amen. 
Amen. In my dream, the gates were shut. But the promise here is the gates shall not be shut. This and this is this is not this is not my words. I'm just gonna put that out there. These are not my words. I don't have to say nothing. I was telling, I think me and brother brother Jeremiah Marshall was online. We was discussing some scriptures and things. And, and uh, a lot of times when, you know, when you say things, people say, well, what are you saying? I'm not saying nothing. I don't have to say nothing. I'm just a reporter. The scripture says, who have believed our report? I'm not saying nothing. I'm just reporting to you what God said. This is his words. These ain't my words. Amen. I'm just a reporter. Thank the Lord. So the promise is the gates shall not be shut. Verse two says, I will go before thee and I will make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in asunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee treasures of darkness and hidden riches of of, of secret places that thou may knowest that I, the Lord, this is his word, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Now, if you take notice, see, we can see that God is revealing secret places, hidden riches, treasures. Just like he was showing Daniel. Amen. Just like in Daniel's dream. Daniel needed to know what the secret was. Amen. So we can hear the same, a, a lot of the same language. So my notes say here, we have another example of God using the vehicle of dreams and visions in order to give wisdom, might, knowledge, understanding concerning the change of times and seasons and removal of kings or the setting up of kings. Some will doubt and say, God doesn't have to speak to ones in this way anymore. But look what Job said. In Job 33, 15 through 16, it says, In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon me, in slumbering upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. Amen. What's that saying there? He's going to use dreams and visions in the night to open up instruction to men not only to men but special men special men that have a cause and a purpose on their life people men that have a charge on their life amen look at amos 3 7 surely the lord will do it will do nothing but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. You say, well, Brother Jameson, what are you saying? I don't have to say nothing. I'm just telling you what the book says. I'm just telling you what the scripture says. Number 12, 16. Numbers 12, 16. Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him. How? In a vision. And I will speak unto him how? In a dream. Amen. Praise God. Now look, you said somebody might say, well, that's brother, that's that's old testament. You know. God don't have to do that no more. Look at Ephesians 4 11. Ephesians 4 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets. And some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Amen. This is New Testament here we're talking about. There's still prophets in the New Testament. Amen. You know, Brother Brother Morris is down there in Chesapeake. He's dealing with a lot of things. And, and uh, you know, 
uh, very busy and and uh, you know he got on the broadcast the other day as we were studying along this line and he he got on the broadcast and he said yeah the Lord came to me and in visions and in dreams telling me instructed me it still happens today what's the scripture say I'm the Lord thy God I change not amen Jesus Christ today the same yesterday today and forever he's still working the same way these aren't things of 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 just the old testament you know just to write off what somebody is uh, uh what somebody is saying or just to write off somebody's testimony amen these these are the words of god so let's go on a little bit we'll go over to acts 217 this is new testament right here and 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 see i don't have to say nothing I don't have to say nothing. I'm standing on the word of God with Jesus and the apostles and the, and the prophets standing behind me, what I'm saying. I don't have to say nothing. Look at Acts 2, 17. Amen. And this shall come to pass in the last day, saith God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Thank the Lord. We're thankful for that. We're thankful we got the spirit of God. Amen. But what's the result? What's the result going to be? What's the manifestation of this spirit poured out upon all flesh? What's it going to be? And your son shall and your daughter shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Now, right before Peter got up and started preaching, you know, they accused the 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 uh, they accused the brethren of being drunk, drunk. He said, hey, this is not, they're not drunk. This is what the, well, this is the, this is the thing that the prophet Joel talked about. Amen. Trying to just write their testimony off. Oh, no, you don't have to listen to them. They're drunk. Them, them apostles and them, them preachers, they're drunk. You don't have to listen to them. Oh, he had a dream. Hey, it ain't going to be no dream. It ain't going to be revealed through no dream. But look what Joel said. Like I said, I'm not, these are not my words. Amen. I'm just repeating what Peter said. I'm just repeating what Joel said. And they're, they're getting the word of God. They're just speaking the word of God. I'm just speaking what they spoke. Amen. The word of God. Joel 2.28, and this shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams. Amen. And your young men shall see visions. Now, if we consider the context, what, what, what are they talking about? They're talking about, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Well, what happened? What what was taking place when God poured out his spirit upon all flesh? The day of Pentecost. That was what the prophet Joel was prophesying about. And that was what Peter was telling him was happening at that point in time. Hey, this is this is this is what was prophesied about in the scripture. This is the fulfillment of the scripture of the New Testament. When I pour out my, when God is going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh and give him the Holy Spirit to dwell within him. Amen. What's going to be the result? Men shall see visions. And men shall dream dreams. God's going to reveal himself to his people that way. I'm not, like I said, I'm not saying that every dream, because every dream don't every dream don't don't have a message in it. I mean, we are flesh. But when you start to see things line up with the word of God, and that's when people's gonna try to stop you. Oh no, we don't, you know, we don't we don't have to, we don't we the God don't have to talk to us like, like that anymore. God can use any means he wants to talk to people at any time. He's God. But I'm giving it to you right here in the scripture. This is what the prophet Job prophesied about. And this is what the apostles recorded would happen in this New Testament covenant. A manifestation of the spirit. This is a manifestation of the spirit of God. Let's not get it. Let's not get it twisted. This is what this is what the Bible was saying. Amen. We're not gonna get too far in our testimony. It's not time yet. 
It ain't time for me to give that whole testimony, but I'm just giving it as an example and, and showing you how it lines up somewhat with the word of God. Believe me, when the time comes, I'm going I'm to get a testimony. I'm not wanting to sit on it. That's for sure. I'm wanting to give the testimony, but it ain't, it just ain't time yet. But, uh, Isaiah, back in Isaiah 45, amen, listen to what he says about Isaiah, or listen to what he says about, what Isaiah says about Cyrus, thus saith the Lord, of, thus saith, that, that saith of Cyrus, he is my shepherd. Well, what's he talking about? He's talking about the changing of times and the removing and the setting up of kings. Amen. And in his, in, in Isaiah's description, he sees this gate. Amen. If you go back to Ezekiel 9, you'll see six men that came by way of the higher gate. There ain't no gate higher than Christ. Amen. He's the way. And that's the only way that a man is going to come into the sheepfold, just like Brother Morris teached the other morning. But listen to what he says. He is my shepherd. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed Cyrus. I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leave gates and the gate shall not be shut. I will give thee treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. He was telling a secret about Cyrus. Cyrus was going to be a king. That's who God had anointed. Amen. And Nebuchadnezzar, he was revealing a secret to Nebuchadnezzar. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar was already a king. Amen. Let's go on on our scriptures a little bit. For those of you still not believing that this is a New Testament thing, here are just a couple of other examples of people getting visions in the New Testament. Here's Peter's vision. Acts 11, 5. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. A certain vessel descend, a certain vessel descend as it had been a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even unto me. That was his that was Peter's revelation that God was no respecter of persons. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. But God revealed it to him in a vision. Acts 9.10. This is Ananias' vision. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord, how? How did the Lord say it? In a vision. Ananias and he said behold I'm here Lord God's talking to him amen in a vision New Testament by the spirit Acts 10 3 speaking of Cornelius he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him Cornelius Amen. I think we have a couple more. <clears throat> Who is this? Paul? Paul has a vision. And a vision appeared unto Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia, prayed him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Amen. Acts 8, 9, 8, 18, 9. Then spake the Lord unto Paul to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak 
and hold not thy peace. And of course, the Revelator, John, Revelation 10, uh, 1, 10, and 12. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. And that's the only, that's the only time a man is going to get a, a vision of God is being in the spirit. You got to be, it's a manifestation of the spirit. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. Now, how are you going to see a voice? Amen. You ain't, you ain't going to see a voice. But John was getting a vision. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. He didn't hear seven golden candlesticks. He saw them because they was revealed to him in a vision. Amen. So let's go on. We want to um, see these. These are examples of deep secret things being revealed to God's prophets. When you start to when you start to see the scriptures line up with the dream or the vision, you might just want to slow down. Take your time, pray about it, ask God to reveal it to you, open it, make it plain to you if it is anything. I guarantee you the scriptures is going to come. If you if you really searching for God, if you really want to know what God is saying, he's going to bring the scriptures to you. Amen. And I'm not saying I'm not sitting here saying that every dream, every dream is certainly not a vision of God. It's not of God. But sometimes I'm afraid that it is. And because of what people say or how people react, we just sit on it. We don't look at it. We don't uh, express it. We don't um, uh, share it. Amen. My mind goes to Brother Wilson's. I believe it, Brother Wilson's sister. He, he, she had a dream. Amen. She had a dream that there was a wagon being pulled with some hay on it, and there was all this hay falling off, falling off the wagon. The harvest falling off the wagon. Harvest being lost. Amen. She had a vision. This is New Testament, brethren. This is New Testament. Sorry for pounding on the table. Uh, <laughs> this is New Testament. This is not something something old or, you know. Everything that we come in contact with, we have to put the word of God on it to see if, if it's a God. We put the test on it. It, it. The Bible says try the spirits. Amen. But somebody has a vision and maybe it, it, it may be because they're afraid of what the vision may mean certainly amen i'm sure that nebuchadnezzar and we'll get into that uh, a little bit later uh next week but i'm sure nebuchadnezzar was a little frightened by some of the things that daniel was revealing to him because they weren't all good they weren't all good and sometimes the vision is not what we want per se personally but we're not dealing with our personal desires we're not dealing with what we want personally we're dealing with thus saith the lord amen and if the word of god is bearing witness to the to the to the vision and to the dream we might want to sit up and, t and pay attention amen this is not something old testament this is something that is manifested right in this day and age in which we're living but see, we're too busy and got our eyes so low, spiritually speaking, that we, a lot of times, we don't see them. Amen. May God help us to get our eyes a little higher, to be more watchful. You know, Jesus admonished us to watch and pray. Are we being watchful? Amen. We need to be watchful. We need to consider things, ponder things in our heart a little more. Amen. Just don't pass them off as, oh, this, that's just, you know, ah. I don't believe that. But when the brother comes and he's got 
a myriad of scriptures. What are you going to say? You, you didn't believe it? Is that what you're going to tell Christ? Oh, yeah, yeah, the brother, the prophet came and, you know, he said he had a vision. The prophet came, and but I didn't believe him. Yeah, yeah, he gave he gave all kind of scripture with it. He, he, he prophesied and gave all kind of scripture with it. He proved it to us right out the Bible. But I, I just didn't believe it. <laughs> I don't think it's going to end well. So a secret was to be revealed to Daniel. And it saved it saved Daniel and the magicians. Uh, they were saved because Daniel was able to prove that uh, that he served the God, uh, the God of, of Israel. Now, listen to what it says here. Let's go over to Daniel. I think it is the fourth chapter. Now, see, this is another vision, but but this is a different vision. But this is the this is the purpose that vision serve in the Bible and in our experience. This is Daniel four seventeen. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand of the word of the holy ones to the intent or for the purpose that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men. Men don't rule in the kingdom of men. We don't set kings up. We don't make heads. Amen. Like secular religion. Just appoint people. It's not up to us. God sets members in the body that, that, as it pleaseth him. To the intent or for the purpose that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men. And give it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basis of men. Now, if this is true for king, the kingdom of men, how much more so in the kingdom of God? Amen. Church of God, don't we don't set kings up. We don't prop kings up. And we don't keep kings down. Amen. Because it don't matter what you do. If God has spoken it. You can you can do all you want to do. You can do. You can exercise every power that you have. It ain't going to make one iota of a difference. If God has spoken it. To the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and the kingdom of God. How much more in the kingdom of God? And give it, giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basis of men. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Belshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof. For as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able. Why? For the spirit of the holy God is in thee. Now listen, listen to what, listen to what Daniel said about the dream and about the secret. About the setting up of these kingdoms. See, what we're what we're dealing with here is the time of the kingdom. And 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 in Daniel's vision, he had a vision of an image, and that image was made up of four different types of metal metals representing four kingdoms. But there would be four manly kingdoms, kingdoms of men. But there would be a stone cut out of a mountain, not made with hands. And it was smote the image of the image of Nebuchadnezzar's on the feet and bring it down. And that kingdom is not the kingdom of men. It's the kingdom of God. And it reigns right in the midst of or in spite of the kingdoms of men. 
But this is what this is what Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar about the about the secret about who God was bringing into power. For as much as thou sawest the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. We can be certain, 100% without a doubt, absolutely, positively sure that the interpretation of the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof is sure. How? Right here. The word of God. It'll let us know. Amen. We thank the Lord for it. Thank the Lord that he is able to reveal deep and secret things to us. We thank the Lord that he is still speaking to his prophets. We thank the Lord that we have his word and his spirit to confirm these things. And next week, we're going to get into more um, about the image. Um, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar's image and what these kingdoms represent, the, the, man, the manly kingdoms that they represent, as well as um, whatever the Lord, whatever else the Lord may have. I think I think that's what we're going to focus on next week is unless the Lord directs differently. Um we're going to focus on uh, Nebuchadnezzar's image and and those those four kingdoms of stone cut out of the mountain, uh, not made with hands, which is the kingdom of God. And it says, well, let me pick up one more scripture. <clears throat> it says, and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. See, these kingdoms were going to come. Nebuchadnezzar, the, the kingdom of the Chaldeans, uh, the Medo-Persian kingdom. The Grecian kingdom, then you have uh, Rome, and then right when Rome come into power, here come God with, with send Jesus Christ, the stone cut out of the mountain. He's the chief cornerstone, Amen. And he smote that image right on the feast, on the feet. And the Revelation says, and they overcame the dragon by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. And that's how we get victory. We we. Res abide in jesus christ he abides in us he gives us his spirit that we talked about uh in previous weeks we abide in the kingdom of heaven and right in the days of these kings that are reigning right now god has set up a kingdom within us and we thank the lord for that we thank the lord for your attention uh we don't want to keep you too long but um we thank the lord for the ones that have uh tuned in and uh, we just ask and pray that you would uh, continue to re remember the broadcast, uh, continue to pray for us, continue to pray for uh, our pastor, Brother Decker, Brother Brewer, uh, Brother Morris, Brother McCraney that's laboring in the uh, revival effort this week. Uh, just continue to remember these brethren that uh, they may be able to go forth in a manner that is pleasing unto God and feed and edify the the. the the kingdom of God. Uh, let us let us look to the Lord now and thank Him for helping us. Father in heaven, we certainly do thank Thee and praise Thee for Thy goodness unto us today. We thank Thee for all Your many blessings, Lord. We thank Thee for a true vision of Thy church, dear Father. We uh, thank Thee for knowledge and wisdom, dear Lord, and the secrets that You reveal unto Your people, dear Father. We thank Thee and praise Thee, dear Father, that we can come before Thee and and just uh, uh, humble ourselves before thee in thanksgiving and praise for thy goodness unto us. Certainly you've blessed us with much light, much understanding, dear Father. We ask and pray, Lord, that you continue to remember the, those ones that are laboring in the kingdom, dear Lord. And remember your people, dear Father, that you would help us to just be what you would have us to be. Hear those things in which thou would have us to hear, dear Lord. And we ask and pray that you would continue to bless our brother McCraney as he stands before us this evening to bring the word of life unto us, dear Lord, and that you would bless the ears of the hearers. That if there be 
anyone that's without the Lord that they might see their need and humble themselves before thee, dear Lord, and uh, a new seed might spring up and germinate in the kingdom of God. We just ask, Lord, that you be with us now. And bring us back again together at the appointed time, and we'll be sure to thank thee and praise thee for all that you do for us. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we're going to leave you with another song. Um, the Comforter has come. This is what the kingdom is right here. We thank the Lord for it. And we will see you, Lord willing, uh, next week. We'll probably have to do the broadcast again um, on Saturday because of the revival effort that's going on. But after the revival is over, we'll go back to uh, Friday nights at 8 o'clock. So uh, until then, may the Lord bless you, and we'll see you. God bless. Amen. Oh, spread the tidings round wherever man is found, wherever human hearts and human wars are found. Let every Christian come proclaim the joyful sound that comforter has come. The comforter has come. The comforter has come. The Hey!
Just say. 